Hello, các em nghệ sĩ. Welcome back to the weekly gospel lesson. My name is Father Stephen Tran. I am from Yom Chukote in Houston, Texas, also known as the Redemptress. I am very excited to share the weekly gospel with you this week. If you could take a moment, close your eyes, and join me to make the sign of the cross to let Jesus know that we are in union with him and that he is present among us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Before we explore this week's gospel, let's go back in time to remind of what Jesus taught us last week. Last week, the first gospel of Easter, we learned about Jesus' resurrection. That is the day when Mary of Magdalene visited the tomb where Jesus' body was laid, only to discover that the tomb had been opened. After hearing Mary of Magdalene's news, Peter and another disciple hastily ran to the tomb, only to see the burial cloth not in the same place where they had laid Jesus. That is the day that everyone believed Jesus is truly risen. As we know from the Gospel, Jesus Christ rose from the dead on the third day following his crucifixion which will be Sunday. His resurrection marks the triumph of good over evil, sin, and death. It is a singular event that proves that those who trust in God and accept Christ will be raised from the dead. Now, let us open your weekly gospel booklet to page 80. Jesus strengthened the faith of Thomas. The gospel can also be found on our VEYM website. Once you have located the gospel, I invite you to pause the video and read the gospel slowly and with your heart. Note down difficult words that you need more clarification. Note down phrases that touches you once you have done the reading. Please continue watching the video. Week's gospel mentioned Thomas one of the twelve disciples of Jesus Christ who was famous for doubting Jesus' resurrection, telling the other disciples, Unless I see the mark of the nails on his hands and put my finger into the nail marks and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Jesus then appeared and offered to let him do just that. Upon seeing Jesus in the flesh with his own eyes and possibly touching the wounds, Thomas proclaimed, My Lord and my God. Jesus responded with one of the most powerful and prophetic statements about faith in all of Scripture. Have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. Let's explore it more. Well, Thomas is the one who isn't present the first time Jesus appeared to the disciples, and this has an effect on his faith. When the disciples all come to tell him that they have seen the risen Lord, Thomas refuses to believe it. There's little questions that Thomas doubt would have been elevated sooner if he had simply been with the rest of the apostles as they gathered. It is in Jesus' intentions that we follow him in isolation from one another. It's incredibly important for us to be connected to and regularly gathering with other Christians. This connection allows us to be encouraged by other stories and our shared experiences. A week later, his disciples were in the same house, and Thomas was with them. Though the door were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. When he said to Thomas, Put your finger here, see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. It's probably important to recognize the gentleness that Jesus expresses here. He doesn't chastise Thomas for his lack of faith. Instead, 
He addresses Thomas in a way that allows him to believe. In an instant, Thomas goes from not believing that Jesus was risen to recognizing that he is God. What we learn from Thomas is that being in Jesus' presence brought out the best in him by increasing his faith. Conversingly, being away from Jesus seemed to trigger doubt. Jesus is talking about you and me. We didn't have the luxury of walking with Jesus or touching his scars. We lived thousands of years removed from the events recorded in the Gospels, and Jesus recognizes the faith that it takes for us to believe. That's why he pronounces a special blessing on us for trusting in him. Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. There was a story about a college student in a philosophy class which had a discussion about the existence of God. The professor presented the following topic. Has anyone in this class heard God? Nobody spoke. Has anyone in this class touched God? Again, nobody spoke. Has anyone in this class seen God? When nobody spoke for the third time, he simply stated, then there is no God. One student thought for a second and then asked for permission to reply. Curious to hear this bold student's respond, the professor granted it, and the student stood up and asked the following questions of his classmates. Guys, has anyone in this class heard our professor's brain? Silence. Has anyone in this class touched our professor's brain? Again, silence. Has anyone in this class seen our professor's brain? When nobody in the class dared to speak, the student concluded, Then, according to our professor's logic, it must be true that our professor has no brain. There will be many times in our lives when we feel doubtful, particularly when we don't hear, see, and touch something. It makes it even harder for us to believe it exists. Our faith waver and we lose our place with God, but we need to take Thomas' experiences as a lesson, as a reminder that just because we cannot see, touch, or hear our brain doesn't mean it's not there. Now, I invite you to take a few moments to reflect on the following questions. Feel free to pause the video and make note of your thoughts. Each week we are called to live a virtue so that we can imitate God's loving heart. This week's virtue is faith. Faith means to have complete trust or confidence in someone or something. This week I challenge you to truly focus on living the Eucharistic day with the current coronavirus pandemic. Jesus called each of his faithful sons and daughters to trust in Him, to offer up everything to Him. I invite you to attend daily Mass through living the Eucharistic day. We proudly profess our love to Him. Let's remember that each week we are called to live God's Word through remembering the Gospel verses that remind us of His love. This week, I encourage you to learn and live the verse. Blessed are those who not seen and have believed. Now, I invite you to join me in praying to God, asking Him to increase our faith and to give us joy and peace in everything we do. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.